Up next, a look at King of the Dice from Haba, USA. Uh, King of the Dice is one of the many games I brought home from Origins 2019. It was designed by Nils Nilsson, featuring art by Gus Batts. It was published by Haba Games in 2017, at least in North America. It might have been earlier than that in Germany. Uh, it's one of the first games they put out in what they call their Game Night Approved Game Series. Now, for those who haven't checked out our unboxing video on YouTube, what's in the box? Uh, it's a small box, really tiny box, actually like a... Uh, Almost, almost like ah, bigger than Uno, but a, a nice tiny box. Not a lot inside it. Uh, there's the rules, which are written in two languages, French and English. The actual rules are four pages, and there are a ton of examples in there. Actually, examples of all the cards. Tons of graphics in the rule book. Lots of examples. Every single card types highlighted, described. Uh, great reference for once you play. Then there's the dice. These are pretty much standard D6s with one extra touch. They're wooden, they're a little oversized, but in addition to having pips one through six on like any other D6, each side is also color coded, either red, green, or blue. And there's an equal number of each pip in each color. So there's two blue ones, there's two red ones, and there's two green ones. Quality of the dice is really nice. Like these are nice silk screened. The, the color's not rubbing off these anytime soon. Uh, then you got a deck of cards. The deck has a bunch of different sets in it. There are citizens, which are different fantasy races and creatures. There are domains, which are places where these people live. And then there's a deck of scoundrels. Now, the lo locations are horizontally oriented, where the rest are a portrait like normal cards. Artwork is very bright and colorful with a cartoon feel that I really liked. Um, hopefully, they don't get in trouble for this. But I got to say, it looks Disney-like to me. It looks like a Disney style of animation. Icons that are on the cards that you need while you play are large and very clear. Uh, not a lot in the box, but you know what? You don't need a lot in a box for a good game. Uh, so I, I agree. That I think the, the artwork is great. It is very colorful. Uh, for me, it's more like a Saturday morning, uh, maybe a Nickelodeon or something maybe more than Disney. Okay. Uh, but it's definitely a kid-friendly cartoon yep. uh, graphics. Uh, the one comment I have about the graphics that I've seen, again, I haven't, I haven't played this game yet but I have been uh, tracking uh, some comments and things going on is that some of the graphics on them aren't a hundred percent visually uh, friendly for colorblindness. They, they haven't differentiated differentiated shapes and they've gone with just color differentiation on mm -hmm. some things. And so that's a bit problematic, but other than yeah. that, yeah. it's, it's, it's very, you know, big, big and visible in most cases. And to be honest, like just by choosing red and green as two of your colors, yeah, I know those are the two colorblind problem colors, right? Right. So that's why being able to tell the red and the green apart could definitely be an issue. Right. All right. So, uh, what do we now that we know what you get? How do you play? Well, you start. You lay out the domain cards in stacks with descending point values. Uh, they get laid out, and then underneath each domain, you're going to draw and place one of the citizen cards. Shuffle the scoundrels. Put that deck face up. That's it for setup. Takes seconds. Each player then rolls all six dice and you're trying to meet the requirements shown on the bottom of one of the citizen cards. Now, depending on the color and the creature of each card represents, you'll need different things. For example, fairies need sets of different colors. Like you might need two red and three green dice. Dwarves all want dice with the same numbers. You might need four fives or six sixes. Elves require straights, dice that go one, two, three, four, five, and so on. Each citizen is worth different points based on how difficult the dice combination is. Players can re-roll some or all of their dice twice, just like Yahtzee and almost every dice game ever produced, trying to match one of the cards in play. If they manage to make a match, they get to take the citizen and put it in their scoring pile. Now, here's the neat part in this game is if the color of that citizen matches the domain they're under, so the city they're in or the place they're in, you also get to claim that domain card too. So when players can't make a match after three rolls, they're forced to take a scoundrel. Now, these are worth negative points and go into your deck, and the, 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 that's your penalty for not succeeding. After a card's claimed, the citizens in play all slide down to fill the gap, or if a scoundrel was taken, the last one goes off, and you put a new one out. You keep playing until two stacks of domain cards are claimed, the last scoundrel is claimed, or the deck of citizens run out. At that point, you just add up all the points on your cards and score points. Now, to keep things interesting, some of the citizen cards have special abilities. For example, elves let players take another turn if they're on the top of your scoring pile. And as long as they stay on the top of your scoring pile, you get to take two turns in a row. Hopefully they don't stay there too long. 
Fairies, though, only score points. We have lots of them. The way they work is one fairy is worth one point, two fairies are worth two points each, three fairies are worth three points each, and so on. Dragons are actually bad cards that you play into an opponent's deck and so on. They all have their own little funky things. Now, for the first few games, I do have to admit, you're probably going to have to look these up in the rules, but there is a card-by-card -card reference that's very clear. Yeah, no, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to this game. Uh, again, one of its only real problems is that it is a gussied-up version of Yahtzee. Uh, and so you are dealing with a massive amount of randomness. Yep. Now, the big thing Haba has been pushing with these game night games is to show that their games aren't just for kids. Uh, as far as I know, King of the Dice, uh, as far as it goes, anyone who's listened to the podcast after I got back from Origins will probably realize I've been playing this a lot with adults. And most of the games I played with adults. Now, yes, I did play with my kids, and my kids both do enjoy it. It has hit the table way more often at public play gaming events than it has at home. And I have found it's a great gateway game for non-gamers, but at best a filler game for experienced players. It's interesting, because I, I don't see a lot of that uh, playing out anywhere else. So it's interesting that you've had that experience, yeah. when I'm not seeing uh, many people agreeing that, that it's, it's a game for anyone else other than kids. And what I think it is, is they have it stuck in their head that Haba makes kids games. And they buy it from Haba thinking that Haba makes kid game. They probably haven't even tried it. Because we brought it out to one of the easy mode events, and I taught Sean Hamilton and a group of players how to play it. And they had a great time. They played three times in a row. And then I left and did other things. And then Sean Hamilton taught a group of new people who showed up later in the night. And I think they played seven times throughout the night. And then we had someone come up at the end, ask where they could buy the game. So it definitely adults are appealing to it. And I just wonder if people aren't trying it with that audience with it stuck in their head. This is a kid's game. Uh, it's interesting because I, I do see a lot of comments saying that this is a great kid's game, but I, I can't buy. I, I won't play this with adults uh, again. This well, is uh, the randomness is a big issue. There's a yeah. lot of gamers out there who are dead set against uh, randomness to any degree and to some degree. But I mean, this is a very random game and, and that, you know, this is a, this is not a difficult game. It's got a weight of one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta say, it's gotta be higher than one. That, uh, 1. I, that, I think that's, that's some gatekeeping there from some board game geek users who refuse to rate games on a fair scale. That, yeah. that it's, it's higher than a one. It's gotta be. Cause what I like about it is that there is some strategy. It's not just rolling the dice. I, what do they give Yahtzee? A weight by more than once? Because every time you roll, you gotta, you're gotta you working out the odds in your head, trying to determine which card to go for. And it's a fact that there's multiple cards you can choose from. It's like, okay, that one's obviously easy. This one's going to be hard. You roll that first set of dice. You look at what you're getting close to, and then you're like, oh, man, all I need is one to get this, but it's a one in six chance. And what do I need to get this is a color. Well, colors are one in three chance. So there's a better chance I'll get that, but it's worth more points and so on. Plus, there's the whole domains, right? So there's the, I could grab this card now, but if I wait till next turn, it's going to be under the proper domain and be worth bonus points. And it, also, the domain cards are going to push the end of the game. So if you're losing, you don't want to take a domain card that would end the game, whereas if you're winning, you want to rush the end. Like, to me, that's all stuff that puts it a step above games simply just Yahtzee. Well, again, it's, it's a 1.08. So, <laughs> so ooh, it's a little bit more name. Yeah. I don't know. Like, like to me, this is the this is what makes the game appeal to adults as well as kids. Now, this is the stuff that makes it great for kids, because what I like is that the dice have the colors, right? So it's not just numbers. So as far as teaching kids probability and counting, you're throwing in that totally different mix of probabilities. And I think that's cool to see that as opposed to other push your luck games that just use standard dice. Like even King of Tokyo, I, I think has simpler probability math in it than this does. Because seeing my kids realize that it's easier to roll a specific color than to roll a specific number was a wonderful thing, right? Seeing, especially little G, pick up on it going, oh, it's easier for me to roll a green than it is to roll a six. I thought it was cool. And it's the youngest one that really digs it. Right. But yeah, as you mentioned, it, it's Yahtzee, right? It, it's, it's a Yahtzee-based dice roller, and there's a huge random factor. And sometimes there's going to be nothing you can do because of bad die rolls. In multiple plays, it can be particularly brutal if you get a whole bunch, especially the elves where you need sequences or a whole bunch of the dice where you need specific numbers that you just take scoundrel after scoundrel after scoundrel because no one can make those dice rolls. And I think Deanna put it well when she said, I prefer games where I feel I have more control of my destiny. Yeah, and, and uh, it's, it's problematic, I find, that not only is it 
luck whether or not you can get something or not. I mean, it's just, you know, you can roll three times and not get anything, and you're penalized for having bad luck. Um, yeah. And that's, 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 a, that's an interesting thing. Also, uh, interesting note, uh, at one point, the game, the, the card that was the scoundrel was actually the village idiot and yeah. was a very problematic card, uh, apparently, um, that, that there were many concerns brought up about that they have since replaced it with the scoundrel card. So uh, uh, it's the exact same card. They just changed what it was called. Uh, I don't, I, I believe the image is different or no. Is it? I don't think so. Uh, it, it, I know when a... we're playing, we often call it that. Oh, okay. Interesting. I'll have to, I'll have to take a look at the card and see. Based uh... on the artwork, it, it does get called that. And I often have to oh. correct, correct people. The fool, the village idiot, it's been called both. And I usually say, no, no, it's the scoundrel. Doesn't look very scoundrelly. Uh, so one of the things that randomness is good for, right, is it evens the playing field. And this is what makes a lot of kids games, kids games and, and good for kids is because even an eight year old has a chance to beat her heavy year old loving mom in a game because of the randomness factor. Right. Because if it was a pure strategy game, there's no way little G is going to beat Deanna at most games she plays where throwing in that random factor gives them that chance. Right. I, I don't know. I, I personally found the randomness to be lower than other similar dice games. So like I said, we mentioned Yahtzee. I think there's more probability, more you can affect your chances, more odds you can play, or say even roll for it from Calliope games, which is a game very similar to this one. Uh, the very different card types usually means there's something easy you could go for if you don't want to push your luck. I don't know. I, I'm glad I picked it up. Uh, while I was at Origins, it's seen a steady amount of gameplay since I got it, and I expect to see more in the future. Uh, both my kids like to play it. They play it on their own. They play it with me, as well as bringing it up for adults. Like I said, I, uh, when I go out to a public event, I like to bring some really easy, accessible games. This is one of the games I'll grab just to have on hand in case we meet some new gamers who aren't used to the, the more modern hobby board game. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's definitely, there, there's definitely a mix of people, uh, and I think a lot of it really comes down to the degree of randomness you like in your games. Uh, yeah. and, and especially if you are coming from a more mass market, uh, you know, perspective, you're so used to that randomness mm -hmm. that it feels comfortable. Uh, and, and, and that's kind of that wedge into the gaming, whereas you've got the randomness, it is Yahtzee, but right. you've got the cards and you've got that, that extra, you know, ushering someone into the world of hobby gaming. Now, for a more in-depth look at the King of Dice, head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews. King of the Dice. King of the Dice. 